In this lecture, you are going to learn what DNS is and how it is used by everyone from major IT companies down to everyday home use all around the world. You are also going to learn how to open and use the DNS manager. Now, DNS or domain name system is something that you're constantly using when you browse the internet. You can think of DNS as being the phone book of computer networks and the internet. Just like a phone book would list businesses and their related phone numbers, DNS lists domains and or host names and their related IP addresses. A DNS or domain name system server maintains this directory and the host names with the related IP addresses. DNS allows you to enter a website like Facebook.com instead of entering an IP address directly into your web browser. Obviously, Facebook.com is much easier to remember than 31.13.69.228. Imagine if you had to memorize the IP address of every single website you wanted to visit. It would be rather difficult. When you open your web browser and type in a website address like itflea.com, your computer asks your modem or router to translate that website into an IP address. Now there can be many different DNS servers just like there can be multiple phone books. In fact, most Windows domains have their own DNS servers that maintain records for all the computers that are on their domain. Windows Server has a DNS role that can be installed, and that's what we're going to be doing in this section. You may start the DNS Manager from Server Manager by selecting Tools, DNS. The DNS Manager will appear. This manager allows you to manage this DNS server as well as remote DNS servers. If you'd like to connect to a remote DNS server, simply right-click on DNS and select Connect to a DNS Server. You may then enter the name of the DNS server that you want to connect to. You may also right click on the DNS server that is currently being managed, in my case, ITFDC01. From here, we can do any administrative function we need to, such as configuring the server and its zones, removing stale records, which are records that are outdated or no longer valid, updating server data files, clearing the DNS cache, launching NSLOOKUP, which is a name server lookup tool, starting or stopping the DNS server, editing the server properties, and much more. Let's launch NSLOOKUP and search for our domain workstation ITFWS001. All I need to do is type in ITFWS001 and press enter to execute the command. As we can see in the output, the first thing listed is the server which is servicing our DNS request. It is ITFDC01. Next, we can see the workstation itfws001.itflea.com. This is the fully qualified domain name of our workstation. Below that, we can see the IP address of this workstation. Now, assuming that you are not on a production network, or one that is currently servicing users, let's stop the DNS server and try running the same command to see what happens. On DNS Manager, right-click the DNS server, which in my case is itfdc01, and choose All Tasks, Stop. Now go back to NSLOOKUP and run the same command. Now we can see that the server was offline, so NSLOOKUP was not able to query the DNS server. Now let's start the DNS server back up by right-clicking on the DNS server in DNS Manager and choosing All Tasks, Start. Now that our DNS server is running again, let's become more familiar with this interface. Underneath the ITF01 DNS server, we can see that there are forward lookup zones, reverse lookup zones, trust points, also known as trust anchors, and conditional forwarders. In later lectures, I will explain what forward and reverse lookup zones are, but trust points allow DNS servers to validate DNS data from other DNS servers. Conditional forwarders allow a DNS server to forward a specific DNS query to another DNS server or several other DNS servers. All right, so now you know what DNS does and you've learned a little bit about the DNS manager. Great job getting through this lecture and I will see you in the next one.